Hello, everyone. Today on the final bar, we'll do our normal Monday routine, hitting the market from three directions, top down macro, bottom up stock picking, sector rotation. You know, markets uh, rally pretty good out of the open, sort of settling down through the course of the day. We're recording this around 3 p.m. Eastern and certainly seeing some choppiness going into the last hour of trading. So we'll talk about what that means for the big picture, see how the markets evolved over the course of the show, focus on some key charts on the move. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final bar. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com in a rainy Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close as we look at these markets together through the lens of technical analysis, focus on investor behavior, decision making, behavioral finance, all that you can interpret using charts, right? using uh, visualization of, uh, of investor behavior. And as we've talked about, you know, this market has been about a resilient uptrend. Uh, you know, signs that the trend is exhausted have, have essentially been ignored. The market tends to continue higher. Today's an interesting day, though. You're coming out of the weekend, a nice rally into the close on Friday. Today's session just continued, spiked out of the open with the S&P going higher. But during the course of the trading, it sort of settled back in uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, sort of flat for the, uh, for the day from Friday's close. Technology consumer discretionary back in the driver's seat today and the things that had been leading us, things like energy, financials, industrials, materials, all actually on the weaker end of the uh, sector list. So when you look at the sector distribution just from today's trading, and as I mentioned, we're recording this a little earlier uh, in the afternoon around 3 p.m. Eastern to start. Um, you know, it's sort of back to the average day during a bulk of this uptrend off of the March lows, which was tech, communication, consumer stocks leading the way higher, the late cyclicals, things like financials and energy lagging behind. So a bit of a mean reversion here. And the question I would ask is, is this just a quick one day sort of, uh, you know, right, writing of the markets before we continue? Or is this a sign of something uh, something deeper? We'll try to answer that together. Um, having said that, we have some wonderful guests on uh, on Stock Charts TV, particularly on the final bar. I've been really thankful for some of the guests we've had in recent weeks and in recent months. Uh, more of the same this week. We have options expert Jay Soloff joining the show tomorrow for the first time on the 15th. On Wednesday, the 16th, we have Tony Dwyer from Canaccord Genuity, one of my favorite uh, macro guys, joining the show. As a reminder, starting uh, next week on the 21st, we have our two-week special year-end programming called uh, Reflections 2020. A lot of our normal shows, including the final bar, are going to take a couple weeks off for the end of the year as we, uh, as we wrap things up. Uh, but we have so much really good uh, special content we've created for you. Three streams of content coming your way. First is uh, 10 in 10, 10 uh, experts all giving you their top chart of the of the year, their top theme of the year uh, using charts. So 10 uh, experts over 10 days. Uh, we have a separate set of discussions on sector rotation led by Julius DeKempner from RRG Research and a third set of, uh, of discussions on year-end reviewing and how you look at your performance and, uh, and, and, and evaluate it and, uh, and design some good habits for the next year. I've done a special for that. We have some others that have uh, that are contributing some content as well. So look for that content starting next week. It's going to be a fantastic two weeks of, uh, of ideas for you going into next year. Let's get to our market recap. So as I mentioned on Monday, we hit the market from three directions. Let's start with the top-down macro view. And again, we're recording this a little bit early, but, uh, but, but uh, you know, pay attention to how things are going into the close. But the story so far has been step one, gap higher out of the open with the S&P going just up to that 3,700 level. And then coming back down and step two has been this stepwise motion back to the downside, giving up pretty much all the gains from the gap higher in the morning. The S&P at this point sort of flat, mid caps and small caps up a little bit more, but not much. Um, so it's really sort of a, uh, a digestion uh, of sorts, really. This is a, you know, a gap higher and then profit taking of, of, of sorts, pushing, uh, pushing things back, uh, back lower. 
Looking at some other asset classes, bonds essentially, uh, you know, moving higher after a big gap lower. So sort of the opposite of what you saw from stocks and 10 year yields essentially flat for the day, to be totally honest with you. Some good movements in the commodity space with gold and silver really rotating lower. So it's not like uh, stocks going back down and everyone's going into the safe haven of gold. It's not really the case. Both of them actually rotating lower into the uh, into the last hour of trading. Um, commodities overall uh, a little bit stronger though. Uh, cryptocurrencies had been up uh, pretty significantly. This is coming on uh, on yesterday's trading, essentially flat for most of the day uh, today. Essentially, uh, with Bitcoin and other other cryptos uh, a little bit weaker than Bitcoin uh, through the course of the day today. Big gains on uh, yesterday though uh, over the weekend. Let's look at some of the big picture charts, and we'll get to uh, sectors. And stocks, as we look at the S&P here going into the close, you know, the, the long-term story has certainly been a story of, uh, of strength and resiliency. And when, when you look at, you know, this overall market, you take a step back, you see the big runoff of the March lows, you see this September, September to October period as a consolidation phase. And that uh, consolidation phase was resolved to the upside. And again, depending on, you know, regardless of how you measure this, whether you see this as a big, you know, sort of rectangle pattern, whether you see it as a coil of lower highs, and higher lows. I, I see the argument for both, but the key for me is either way you've resolved that pattern to the upside. So the trend is positive until proven otherwise. We saw a bit of uh, an indication of otherwise uh, midweek last week when you saw the bearish engulfing pattern on the S&P and on some you know, particular stocks and sectors as well. That speaks to weakness over the next couple of bars. And that's sort of what you got. You got weakness going into uh, the weekend with a, a series of lower closes. Today, again, you're getting a, a bit of a lower close. Uh, potentially, we'll see how things uh, sort of wrap up, but just short-term weakness. And so again, 3,700, now sort of that next, you know, that next line of resistance. And we've faced that now a number of times and have been unable to get above there. So at this point, that's sort of that big round number I would be eyeing. On any continued pullback, you have this green shaded area, which is that 3550 to 3600 range. I think for the S&P, that's key. But also, if you look at things like some energy stocks, if you look at things like uh, some financials, the XLF, you see a similar pattern where you have a clear support level to pull back to. And it's a lot of times it's that breakout level from earlier in the year. I think whether uh, the markets are able to hold that on any sort of pullback is obviously pretty, pretty crucial. Um, you know, given the seasonal strength that we're seeing, given the news on vaccines rolling out, there seems to be a lot of, you know, potential for new stimulus uh, announcement. I mean, all of that is sort of net flat to positive uh, overall. It's sort of a continued chip away higher type of vibe. Um, and, and so I think that that speaks to sort of resiliency going into uh, into year end. I, I'm concerned a bit into what we see going into uh, going into next year. Now, having said that, when we get to the sector themes, we can look at some of the individual patterns that uh, I think maybe uh, maybe emerging there. You know, we mentioned on on Friday we went through the weekly wrap show. We spent a lot of time on the um, the mindful investor live chart list, which is our main sort of chart book to reflect on every every week. And I just want to point out a couple themes to uh, to look at. I mean, overall, if you look at price, if you look at breadth, uh, overall, it's, it's been net very supportive. Uh, you know, the price is at or near new highs for the S&P, which means any trend following model is going to be deservedly positive, which is it has been. So our market trend model based on weekly price data on the S&P, long term, medium term, short term, all has been positive. Um, anywhere from June on the long-term model to, uh, you know, sort of early November on the medium-term model, all three of them continuing to be positive. And it's speaking to the strength of the uh, of the market. You know, if if you're asking me for what would tell you when things are starting to turn over, uh, I wrote an article not too long ago on the, on the bull market top playlist. I'd encourage you to look at my blog, Mindful Investor, and check that out because I think it's still, uh, it's still at play, in play. Wrote that, I wrote that earlier. I think I wrote that in August. As we were uh, we were approaching new highs again, uh, but I think this it's a similar uh, set of uh, circumstances that I would uh, I would look at. Maybe this week I'll I'll update that list uh, in terms of where we're at. But a couple of key things I would be looking for on a macro level. Number one is the breadth characteristics, and as you can see, common stocks only, uh, large cap, mid cap, small cap, breadth lines all very positive. Uh, and so I think as as long as that holds, I think we're we're in pretty good shape. You know, higher highs, higher lows. In that condition, you know, in that situation, uh, means means the trend is positive. The other thing I would look at maybe as an indication of things starting to lighten up, and you just saw a downturn in this bullish percent index, is looking at a group of point and figure charts and seeing whether you know what stocks in the S and P are in bull signals or bear signals, buy signals or sell signals using the point and figure methodology. As long as that remains above seventy percent. 
but sort of a healthy bull market phase, everything's good. That breaks down below 70%. Um, you have to start to question. Now, if you're, if you're interested in bullish percent indexes, I'd encourage you to read the uh, chart school article we have on it. These are best used on a point and figure chart. I use it on this type of, uh, on a bar chart just for simplicity and just to use it along with other breadth indicators. But the real way to use it is use it on a point and figure chart. Look for buy and sell signals on the bullish percent. That can do some com confirming for you, but a, a bear alert would occur essentially if we get below, uh, get below 70. And that's one thing I would be looking at along with breadth to indicate a potential downturn. That's our macro picture. So again, overall, the trend has been positive. Uh, the breadth has been positive. We didn't talk about sentiment. We really hit that uh, Thursday and Friday of last week. So check out our shows there. We, uh, we went through the euphoric sentiment that we're seeing uh, in, a lot of, uh, in a lot of survey data and positioning data. Our next segment is sector setups. This is where we go through the second piece of our, uh, of our analysis, looking at sector rotation. I'll give you just a quick and dirty on this one. You know, the, the rotation overall has been you know, I think there have been different phases to this bull market. As you, you know, went through sort of February to March, you had the defensive leadership, things like consumer staples in, uh, in healthcare. March, April, May, you sort of had this rotation into the, the, the leadership for much of 2020, which are the FANG stocks, the FANMAG stocks, um, you know, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Netflix, NVIDIA, uh, and so forth, really driving uh, prices higher. For a while, it was sort of the FANG and then everything else. And you know, the market can go higher with, uh, with the fangs driving it. That's what we saw. And that was what led some of the breadth day to be less than rosy because it wasn't a broad advance necessarily. It was more of a narrow advance driven by, uh, you know, some mega cap stocks and mega caps were far out pacing small caps. You then went into this third phase and it started around maybe, you know, the September peak and then the next couple months where you had this rotation, things like industrials, materials started to do better on a relative basis. Then all of a sudden you had financials and energy gapping higher when we got into October, into November. And, and now the question is, what do we see going into, uh, into year end and then the beginning of next year? Well, on the weekly rotation, you're gonna see that last couple themes, right? You're gonna see the emergence of energy and financials. And if you look at some of the lines that are heading Northeast, sort of the direction of, uh, of appreciation, direction of integration, I don't know what I would necessarily wanna call that, but, but certainly more positive than negative. So anything heading Northeast means it's rotating, uh, you know, starting to outperform and the momentum is going in, in that favor, uh, in, in its favor, which is all positive. So energy has been certainly the most dramatic on the weekly RRG financials as well. Communication services, don't forget that one. And, and what Com Com Services has done is sort of this, you know, um, clockwise rotation all on the right side of the, of the graph, which is arguably the most attractive uh, opportunity, which is something that's outperforming. And it's just, you know, the momentum is sort of coming in and out. It's, it's waxing and waning within an overall stretch of outperformance. That's kind of the sweet spot for RRG. That's one of the patterns I would, uh, I would look for often. And so the XLC sort of rotating uh, Northeast back in the leading quadrant is pretty impressive. You also see on the weekly RRG what has been the most uh, you know, the strongest performer. So anything further to the right means it's, you know, up until now has been the most, uh, the strongest performer. So it's industrials and materials really overtaking consumer discretionary and technology in the driver's seat uh, on the relative rotation work again on the weekly charts. And what you avoid are things like real estate, consumer staples heading southwest going into that lagging quadrant. Now, if we look at the daily RRG, this is going to be a little shorter term. So now we see how sectors are rotating within that context of the longer term trend, you're actually seeing some interesting rotations just starting to begin on energy, just starting to begin on industrials where they have been heading southwest, but now just starting to rotate very quickly to the northeast. And if that continues, if you get this positive rotation heading back northeast for energy for industrials, I think there could be uh, some really compelling opportunities to get back into some of those leading into next year. That's one of the important patterns I would be looking for uh, sort of December uh, through the holidays going into, uh, into January. So the strongest performers are furthest to the right. All of those strong performers are in the weakening quadrant right now, which speaks to, again, sort of further rotation on the short term. Things that are starting to emerge that I'm watching for communication services, as we've talked about, some of the better individual charts we've seen uh, in comm services recently. Um, you can see healthcare starting to rotate more northeast uh, over the last uh, over the last week, and I see I think seeing that continue to strengthen would be an important uh, pattern, and also an important comparison right now between consumer discretionary, which is heading sort of south southwest, and consumer staples, which is heading sort of north northeast. So again, on the daily rotation, a bit of a mean reversion there on that theme, where consumer discretionary has certainly been outperforming consumer staples for quite a while. 
Let's look at the candle glance uh, on these uh, four. I'm going to check in on the markets very quickly here. Yeah, continuing to be um, sort of flat here with the S&P essentially flat uh, around uh, 315 Eastern. As we continue here looking at the, uh, at the 11 S&P sectors, and again, the candle glance page is where I sort of take a step back and look for any of, the, uh, any of the key patterns. What strikes me looking at this over the weekend and into today is just how many of the S&P sectors are above two upward sloping moving averages, and, and it's most of them. Uh, you know, financials are maybe one where the 200 day is not quite sloping higher, but really, really close. But most things are above it. Only two sectors are not. Utilities over here on the right, real estate uh, here at the bottom. You know, utilities are an interesting one. We talked about uh, utes here recently, and especially when it was breaking out in October. And if you look at this rotation from relative underperformance to relative outperformance, what happened in November, November was a very much a a change of character for a lot of things. This is where all of a sudden financials and energy start to perform very well. Utilities start to underperform, right? Giving back all of those relative gains that you saw from September to uh, through the end of October. Now what's happened is if you look at a chart of the XLU, it's sort of round tripped, it broke out of this uh, resistance area around 61 to 62, broke out of there in October, retested that in November, made new swing highs. It was threatening a new all-time high here from the beginning of the year. It's now given that back and it's retesting this support. So, you know, if I'm looking for uh, stocks and sectors that have broken out and now retesting support from above, utilities might be one of those that I would be, uh, that I would be thinking about. And again, what's interesting is from a risk reward perspective, now that it's pulled back enough, of the reward, potential reward, is a return to those previous highs, 67 or so. Um, the risk, we're sort of right at that, uh, at that support level. So, uh, you know, as long as the support holds, it's sort of in that, in that point where you may consider uh, further accumulation. Uh, we'll have to see how utilities do. And again, this is a, you know, certainly more of a defensive sector, more of a high, higher yielding sector uh, going into, uh, into the new year. Energy is an important one just to highlight here. So you have this rotation um, from a big up day on Thursday, sort of a choppy day on Friday. And then, uh, you know, so it's not quite a bearish engulfing pattern. It's like a bearish engulfing pattern with one day in the middle, which I don't think is technically a candle pattern. That's a made up uh, Dave Keller pattern, but certainly to me speaks of some internal weakness uh, today versus what you saw on Thursday of last week. And short term, I think that certainly speaks to some short term weakness. So, you know, for at least for the first half of this week, you can see some further rotation away from energy, away from something like financials into things like technology, into things like consumer discretionary, where you saw some strength today. You didn't see the give back that you're seeing in some of those other, uh, other sectors. We need to take a quick commercial break back with shifting stocks. We'll see you in a minute. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Final Bar. This is Dave Keller here at StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for joining us every weekday after the close for our show. Appreciate all the feedback we've gotten from you uh, on the show, on the content, on our guests. And please keep them coming. We are uh, anxiously uh, excited for, uh, for the beginning of the new year and, uh, and looking for how we can continue to upgrade this show and many others. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, in particular, questions that, you're, uh, that are coming up in your normal uh, analytical process as you're trading, as you're investing. What questions are coming up as you're looking at the charts? Shoot us an email, thefinalbar at stockcharts.com. We'll do another mailbag segment on Tuesday's show. We'd love to answer your question on the air. Also, uh, hit us on Twitter at FinalBarSCTV or on our YouTube channel. Just put a comment right below the video that you're watching. Our next segment is called Shifting Stocks. So again, our Monday routine is macro, where we talked about the resilience of the equity uh, trend. Uh, give back a bit today, sort of a flat uh, overall uh, overall day, late afternoon. We talk about sector rotation, really the potentially the beginning of this rotation, this reversion back to tech and consumer away from financials and energy. That's what Monday is bringing. Let's see what the rest of the week, week if we continue to get that follow through. But short-term read on energy stocks is, uh, is a similar pattern. Now I want to get to our third segment, which is shifting stocks, where we focus individual uh, on individual names and some key themes here. I wanted to focus, just start on uh, start on energy a bit. Uh, we talked about a couple different uh, themes here, and one of the things that I'd like to uh, like to start with is the uh, let's see the OIH, 
which is the oil services ETF. We talked about this on Friday. I sort of uh, threw it in as one of our uh, our three and three charts, and I just want to spend another minute on here. You know, this this idea of uh, of uh, of oil stocks and oil services rolling over. Um, well, well, again, the the movement today is certainly pretty pretty heavy relative to the rest of uh, what we're seeing. I don't think it's that huge of a surprise, uh, only given the um, you know what what we've seen up until now, and in particular, I think it's this bearish divergence that we saw. So if you look at um, the uh, the fact that the OIH, or you could also talk about um, the uh, dollar sign OSX, which is the oil services index, or some of the other uh, oil uh, stock ETFs or energy uh, ETFs, the XLE is sort of a similar thing. But if you look at uh, look at this pattern right here, you see the fact that the OIH has uh, reached its June peak. So it has not broken above it, while most stocks have already broken above their June highs. This is a group that's actually right at the sweet spot uh, testing its June high. You have this bearish divergence, higher highs in price, lower peaks in the uh, in the RSI. And so that concerns me a bit when you see uh, bearish divergences as the price hits a previous resistance level. For me, that's a bit of a warning sign. Again, as a trend follower, that's an early warning. That's what puts it on my watch list, a breakdown. When we start breaking down through swing lows, we see lower lows in the price, lower highs. Um, that's when you start to get concerned. So if you do see oil stocks come back, you know, 140 on the OIH would be a pretty logical short-term support level to see if that's able to hold on any rally. Do you make a higher high or do you make a lower high? And that could sort of complete a rotation lower. Obviously, this is a group that's done very well over the last six to eight weeks. It's been a nice, consistent outperformer. So that pattern is what I'm seeing on uh, on energy stocks. This is over the weekend. And so the sell-off that we're seeing today, you know, with, with the OIH down uh, 3%, some individual stocks uh, on the uh, on the biggest uh, um, drop in the uh, in the scooter rankings or what what come to mind the chart of Occidental is another one we'll uh, we'll look at OXY uh, what candle pattern is this and this is a trick question because I actually don't think it I don't think it's one that has a particular name um, I was actually flipping through before we started I'm like oh man I should not bring up um, candle patterns that I'm not a hundred percent sure of I know my I know my stuff here but it's been a while I I was originally going to call this an evening star candle. Uh, pattern, but I don't. It's not quite because an evening star. You actually want the middle one up here. You, a, a star pattern usually means a gap between these two bars. You have a big up day, you have a big down day, and in the middle you have this little gap higher. That's what technically I think that would be an evening star pattern. I might call this an evening star like pattern. Um, but basically, if you look at Thursday's upswing to today's downswing, this stock was down almost eight percent today, or is down almost eight percent after a huge gain. On Thursday, you know, skip this day, uh, uh, Fridays, which is sort of a, a non-factor, sort of a, a choppy uh, little give back day. I mean, overall, you're seeing a rotation from, you know, from bullish to, to bearish. The question is always about the follow through, right? To follow through with this in the next couple bars, and that would sort of uh, signal potential for further downside. But you're seeing some energy stocks like, uh, you know, MPC, Marathon Petroleum up here, uh, Occidental, uh, SLB. These are, uh, many of these are part of that, uh, part of that group, that oil services group. Uh, represented by uh, by that previous one that I showed you, uh, Pfizer as well, right? So Pfizer's sell off, while you know, again, pretty severe uh, today, is not new. You had what's called a dark cloud cover here uh, mid last week, and then you've had continued downtrend. So Pfizer, obviously, you know, widely uh, known and widely followed related to the coronavirus vaccine and what's going on. But again, I, I think this is one of those charts where you need to separate the news flow and separate the idea of what Pfizer doing what it's doing to, you know, help the, the, the world, help, help the, uh, the country recover from uh, this coronavirus pandemic, but also, you know, separate that with what should happen, given what, what we're hearing in the news versus what actually is happening. Look at the price of the chart of the stock, and I'm seeing a price that's going down, and, I, and that's not a new thing today, while, while today is certainly a, you know, a, a severe down move relative to the average move on the stock. Uh, it's been going down for the last couple of days. So, you know, remember to separate what you think might happen or should happen or could happen versus what actually is happening. You have a benefit uh, of being a chart related analyst to focus on what actually is happening. I'd focus on the me message of the individual chart. Uh, Netflix is an interesting one. You know, part of my normal weekend review is looking at the FANG stocks and that theme. And I think Netflix is one of those. If you if you think about the stagnation of the uh, of the of the FANG trade, Netflix might be one of the better examples of that. It's literally mid range. If you look at the rally uh, out of the lows in March, really from July on, it's been in this range. You can draw a big rectangle uh, to highlight Netflix's uh, performance over this period. And the question is. 
you know, we continue to uh, bounce off of rebound off of the lows. We tend to, you know, find resistance at the highs. When does that pattern break? What's interesting now is in the short term, you're seeing a nice move higher up 4% on a day when the average stock is flat to down. So the fact that we're seeing some continued upside here, we're testing the upper end of this short term uh, swing. I can see that returning back to the previous highs. Again, my concern on a, on a chart like this is we have significant overhead resistance. Just look at what happens every time the price type tries to get above 560. It literally fails that day. So I'm, I'm concerned about the upside on a stock like this, but if and when we're able to follow through, and the, and the key there is follow through. Are you able to break above resistance and then follow through it further to the upside? And that's what would con, uh, convince me that uh, something like this has further, uh, further upside there. Uh, have to talk about Tesla. You know, I think it's worth noting uh, Tesla is the top ranked stock in our scooter ranking. Uh, you know, what's interesting on the chart of Tesla is if you look, it's coming out of this overbought condition. What's interesting, I think, though, on this particular chart, a couple of things. Number one, Tesla is up when most things are down today. That's important to, uh, to think about uh, as a data point. Number two, you have that bearish divergence on things like the OSX. You do not see that bearish divergence on something like Tesla. So, you know, just as meaningful as what stocks are showing a bearish divergence are, are the other, is the other side of that. What stocks are not showing that? Tesla isn't, right? Tesla is actually showing some, some resiliency and showing some, I'm using that word too much today, sorry for that, showing some, uh, some potential for further upside, rallying when other stocks are not, but not showing that uh, divergence, meaning the momentum is not coming out of that name just yet. It's continuing to go to the upside. To wrap up this, uh, this, uh, this uh, segment on uh, shifting stocks, I did want to point out Plug Power, which is a hydrogen name. This is one of the, uh, this is the top ranked mid cap stocks. So if you look at our mid cap scooter rankings, it has been the number one ranked stock uh, for quite a while here. It's had this nice stepwise motion uh, really coming out of the March low. It bottomed out uh, before the average stock. And it's had this nice run higher though, but it's had this real bearish divergence now with lower highs in the RSI, lower peaks in the RSI on this, uh, on this series of higher highs in price. So I'm a bit concerned about the short-term weakness there, but it, that has uh, proven to, the 50-day moving average has proven to be an interesting pullback level on that stock. I'd be looking for a pullback there, maybe a pullback to 22, which would be the previous swing lows. See if it's able to hold those levels. And if so, a uh, strong rank name, uh, potentially pulling back to a more opportunistic level. That is our segment, Shifting Stocks. Sorry for being all over the place, but I was just hitting on some of the key themes that, that I'm seeing. We need to wrap the show. Three in three, three charts, three minutes. Here we go. Chart number one is our Dow Theory chart. I actually did an interview uh, earlier today talking uh, uh, for, for a media outlet, talking about Dow Theory and talking about indexes and how they're used. And so it, it just inspired me to look back at the traditional Dow Theory, looking at Dow Industrials and Dow Transports. And while it is, is it an outdated way of thinking of the U.S. economy? Absolutely. Is it something that was designed over 100 years ago, which is maybe less relevant to the current market? Absolutely. Is it still something that a lot of institutional investors would look at as a way of just measuring the overall health of the markets? Of course. And that's why I will still, uh, I will still look at it. We also look at a new doubt theory using the S&P and the NASDAQ, and all of those are confirming you know, higher highs, higher lows until that trend reverses until you see a, a, a lack of lower highs, the, the, the overall trend is positive according to that uh, methodology. Interesting to see the Dow teasing 30,000 once again today. Chart number two are the micro caps. This is an index. IWC is the micro cap ETF. We talk about large, mid, and small so often. Micro caps are an interesting uh, uh, place only because you're getting into some liquidity issues, you're getting into some stocks that and companies you're probably less familiar with. But I've always been inspired to look at trends and where they're at. And if things like frontier markets or micro cap stocks are working, I'm going to want to lean into what's working. And if you look at the relative strength in the micro cap index over the last six weeks, it's actually pretty impressive, not showing any signs of, uh, of stopping right now as the trend continues to push more positive, higher highs and higher lows. It's an interesting chart to follow to see if that's able to hold up, especially if you get continued choppiness in some of the large mega cap value trade. Finally, we talked about Tesla in our shifting stocks segment. I'm not sort of a perma bull or a perma bear on Tesla on something like this. I'd, I'd much rather just follow the trend. And, and again, what I'm seeing right now, uh, regardless of what you think of the company or the products or anything, charts going higher. I'm seeing higher highs, higher lows. And I'm most impressed by a lack of bearish divergence and the fact that the stock is up today almost 5% when the average stock is uh, flat to down. Folks, that's our show for today. Thanks so much for joining us every weekday after the close for the final bar. Uh, super excited for the guests coming up through the remainder of the week. So check uh, every day for the, uh, for the latest guests. Also, 
check out our uh, Reflections 2020 programming starting next week. For StockCharts.com and Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe. Have a good night. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.